faith leaders uh, across uh, the nation are, oh, I'm so are sorry. I was the such a NFL man. to move the 2023 Super Bowl from Arizona uh, as the state moves to enact voter restriction laws. In this letter, more than 200 faith leaders assigned will sit to the NFL commissioner, Roger Goodell, after Arizona GOP lawmakers proposed a bill that would allow them to reject election results. According to the proposal, if legislators reject the results, a voter could then file in court to have the state hold a new election. In addition, if passed, the proposal would make other changes in the state's election procedures, including uh, eliminating Arizona's early voting by mail program and requiring election workers to hand count ballots. Uh, the, you know, we're seeing these type of utterly ridiculous things all across the country, Kelly. And again, what people need to understand, none of this is happenstance. This is a, he a heavily funded, clear, precise assault on voting by the Republican Party because they know if they can shave off 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 votes. They know they win Arizona in 2020. They win Georgia in 2020. They know that's what's going on. And so people have to understand why folks like us, why civil rights organizations are taking this so seriously because if they are successful, as Jasmine said, if they got the legislature and they got the courts, they can literally rig the elections in their favor, even if 55 or 60 percent of the people in the state vote Democrat, they'll still control all the levers of power. You're talking about how Republicans are saying if they can just get a certain number. I mean, we saw uh, or at least heard the footage of, of Donald Trump asking uh, the Georgia voting commissioner, however the title is, asking for the exact number of votes right. needed in order to beat Donald Trump. Uh, Look, just go get me 11,000. 11,405. Right. He ain't saying 12,000. Right. I was just like, that's yeah. specific. <laughs> Yeah. So they, they know exactly which numbers that they need. But on top of that, what I found most interesting about this entire situation regarding the redistricting in Texas, uh, on top of the fact that this man just straight up said, yeah, we did it. And but in his rationale, um, in the article that I read, it says, quote, the Voting Rights Act says if you can create a district in which a and this is the important part, historically marginalized minority can elect a candidate of their choice, you must d draw that district. So that is the clause that they used in order to make this happen and have it within legal boundaries. But what's more insidious about this is that it implies that white people are historically marginalized minorities in Texas. I just want that to sit in for a second and how absurd that sounds altogether. The fact that he was able to basically say that White people are historically marginalized and a minority in Texas, and that's why the redistricting needed to be the way it was. That's crazy. Uh, Matt, you're there in Texas. People, look, it, it, it is not people go, oh, it's Texas. No, it's Texas. It's Arizona. It's Georgia. It's Florida. Mm -hmm. It's Alabama. It's Tennessee. It's Arkansas. It's anywhere where Republicans are controlled. They trying to pull the okie doke in New Hampshire. We know what time it is. We know what time it is. We know their game plan. We know exactly what they're doing. We see what they're doing. But if I may, Roland, if you'll indulge me first, I want to um, shout out Rep Crockett, who's actually running for Congress and who is a fighter in this state. So she was too humble to say it. But we absolutely need to support that sister because we need her in the big house, as she said, fighting against this. Um, this is the game plan. Now, what I think is interesting is there's actually precedent for this as it relates to Arizona, because back in 1991, um, it's my understanding that they moved the Super Bowl from Tempe, Arizona, to California because Arizona uh, failed to recognize Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So this kind of actually dovetails with our previous segment about money, right? Because here's the issue. The Super Bowl is going to generate millions of dollars. So telling the NFL, hey, unless you get this right and because of this uh, voting rights bill in Arizona, unless you move this, you know, you're going to have issues. That's how you hit people in the pocket and that's how you hold them accountable. And I'm hoping that it gets some traction because the 
uh, Arizona legislature, just like all these other legislatures, are straight up saying we don't care about a certain group of people and there's nothing you can do about it. And here's our game plan to keep marginalizing them. We can't continue to allow that to happen. Michael. Yeah, Roland, this is another example of leveraging our economics to enforce our politics. But you only do this if you respect yourself. You only protect what you respect. You only protect what you respect. So they should definitely do this. And if, if and if the Super Bowl is not moved by 2023, it, 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 uh, when it when it when it takes place in Arizona, uh, we should not watch it. I haven't watched the NFL game since Colin Kaepernick left the league. So you know I'm down with this. Absolutely. So uh, when when you just talked about Texas and the voter suppression bill in Texas. People need to go back and read the article that Ari Berman wrote for Mother Jones in about May of 2021 that dealt with Heritage Action, the Heritage Action Organization, which is the uh, sister organization to the Heritage Foundation. And Jessica Anderson, who's the CEO of Heritage Action, was caught on tape talking about how it was their organization that crafted the voter suppression bill in Georgia, Senate Bill 202, and then how they were crafting similar bills in uh, Republican state legislatures that are being pushed by Republicans. This stuff didn't just all happen by itself. It's, it's, it's orchestrated and funded. And then, they, and then once the bills pass the state legislature, then Heritage Action and other organizations put pressure on the governors to quickly sign the bills into law. So we have to understand how all this comes together. It, it, just like that's just like that effort is funded, the voter suppression, the the uh, fake attacks on critical race theory is funded by dark money groups as well. So we have to get smarter and in, 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 uh, leverage our economics and force our politics and launch economic withdrawal strategies against many of these corporations who are financing many of these Republicans who are voting against our own interests and, su and suppressing our votes. Oh, I hold my unfiltered video in just one moment. Time to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. I support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this is the difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I gotta defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own, a Black man. <laughs> On the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real um, revolutionary right now. The crowd rolling was amazing on that. Stay black. I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig? I 